Welcome back. So today, uh, as a friend of mine just said to me, can you test ChatGPT on op amps and some electronics? So uh, these are the questions I gave it, um, just so that you can see it closer. You might well just not be able to see it so well on, in the actual uh, film because it's done by a camera. But this is the actual, the first question was this simple one with two resistors in parallel. And three, three, and another three in in parallel. And I think I, I thought I asked it to work at IT or I one. I can't remember. And anyway, it got this right. The three resistors in parallel. That's ten ohms. But it seemed to think those were in series. I think, or, or something. I don't know where it went wrong. But it, it got that wrong, and so it obviously got the current wrong. Uh, and then the second one uh, I haven't checked yet, but it, it did know. It, you need it to have a set of equations to work out uh, what these currents are. You need it Kirchhoff's voltage law. Uh, and I'll check back on that later. It, uh, it got this wrong. This is an inverting amplifier. I thought it was uh, non-inverting to begin with. But then I asked it to check it and it said it was... Uh, uh, and then it got it right. Uh, it got this one right, presumably because the last one was wrong. It knew about this one. This is a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of 1 plus R1 over R2. And it got this right, although I didn't ask it for the equations. It's a differential amplifier, two inputs, V1 and V2. And this is a summing amplifier. You might have known all these from first year, uh, if you'd done a diploma or a degree or something. Uh, and then this sums all the voltages and inverts them at the same time. So I got them right. And then I give it something a little trickier. I give it um, the integrator and it got that right. Uh, it was struggling with the second one. It thought, um, it thought this was a differentiator and it's not a differentiator at all. It's a kind of integrator. It's an integrator, it's actually in control, we call it like a PI, proportional plus integral compensator. It goes down at minus 20 dB per decade, and then it goes flat. Uh, so it is a kind of integrator over a limited frequency range. And this one here is a phase lag compensator. Again, we use it in control. Uh, that goes flat and then down at minus 20 dB per decade, and then flat again in, in the frequency domain. So again, it's a kind of low pass filter. Uh, over a, a limited frequency range, but it doesn't integrate from, it doesn't go to zero, unlike this one. So it's a bit like a leaky version of this one. It's got the resistor R2 in parallel with it. Uh, so it didn't get that one right either. And in fact, the um, it, I asked it for the transfer functions. And I think it, yeah, you can see here, uh, it, uh, it gets that wrong. It thinks it's a low pass filter. 1 over 1 plus SC, CR1, that one there. Uh, now there, there's two time constants there. I actually haven't worked this one out for ages, but there's one um, there's one with the sum of these two resistors and there's one with the um, uh, with just the product, uh, the two, CR1. I think the other one is CR1 plus R2. And that would be the low frequency um, What's that? The uh, well, that's the yeah, that's the low frequency one, and then there's the high frequency one, or the other way around. I can't remember. Again, I'd have to work it out. I'm just doing the concepts here. Uh, the voltage uh, there is a DC voltage gain, which is R2 over R3, and it got that right. It's got R2 over R3 here, but it got the rest of it wrong. Uh, what's interesting is um, how confident it seems when it gives the answers, <laughs> which. It's very human-like in that respect. It's very like a, a student-like. In fact, sometimes, it uh, especially when in the in this case, when it was sure this was a a differentiator. Uh, when it's got really no, I mean, it has got um, uh, it's got a, a lead term in it. I mean, it has got a, a, a minus twenty dB per decade, and then it goes flat. So it's got a. Uh, plus 20 dB per decade in there uh, t uh, when it goes flat, but it's not a differentiator per se. Plus the fact, of course, there's no such thing as a real differentiator in analog electronics. 
we can only approximate a real differentiator. That's when you swap the C and the R. And uh, if you do that in a real circuit with these, uh, you'll find that um, it, it oscillates. Um, and the reason it oscillates, you can find it in my book, uh, but it's, um, it's basically, uh, if you include the transfer function of the operational amplifier, which is, it's not shown there, of course, it's, it's within the amplifier. It's um, like K over 1 plus ST. It's, it's like a low-pass filter, approximately, for one pole. Uh, then this, when you put it, when you swap these around the R and the C and you get a differentiator, uh, it, the um, board plot goes through, uh, it goes minus 40 dB per decade, hitting unity gain. So it oscillates when you do that. Um, so I'm afraid... Um, it got that one, it, but it, it got it right anyway, that it was an integrator and it got the formula for integration correct, the first one. See the second one it got wrong. Um, it's got summing junction is spot on, that's the, some of the summing amplifier. Got that right for two anyway. Um, I think that's, yeah, it's pretty much right. Uh, where's the, oh, two of that's a, Inverting amplifier, that's already told it was wrong. It corrected that. And where's the integrator? Ah, oh, there it is. So I got the integrator spot on. Certainly knew what that was. Now let's go and see the actual thing working itself and see. You can judge for yourself. Um, so don't, you know, judge it on a mistake so much as um, its potential. Remember, we're only a few years into. Uh, this this stuff um, so you know you've got to think ahead uh, and you know think what might be possible in five years time let's say or even a year's time uh, when it gets better at this kind of stuff thank you okay so today I'm going to ask you some questions on electrical engineering or electronic engineering so I'm going to show you a circuit so here it is here I hope you can see it can you see it? I I can see it. It looks like a circuit with several resistors and a voltage source. What would you like to know about it? Can you find me the current at point C, that's IT, given those resistors? I, let's find this out. The total current. First, we need to calculate the equivalent resistance. The resistors R3, R4, and R5 are in parallel. Once we find their equivalent resistance, we'll add it to the series combination of R1 and R2. Then we can use Ohm's law to find the total current. Would you like me to walk you through each step? No, could you just give me the answer at the end? Sure thing. The equivalent resistance for the parallel combination is about 10 ohms. Adding R1 and R2 gives a total resistance of 14.1 ohms. Using Ohm's law, the total current is about 9.36 amps. Yeah, so is that the so that's the current IT. I that's the total current IT at point C. It's about nine point three six amps. Thank you for Anything that. Else I can help with. Yeah, here's another problem. This one here, do you see it? I I can see it. It's a circuit with three resistors and two voltage sources. What would you like to find out about this one? Could you find me I one? That's the current in the first loop, please. Certainly. To find I1, we can use Kirchhoff's voltage law. The voltage drop across the 2 ohm and 8 ohm resistors is balanced by the 10 volt source, minus the contribution from the 6 volt source. We can write the equation and solve for I1. Would you like me to do that step by step, or just give you the result? Just tell me what I1 is, please. Alright, I1 is 0 0.5 apps. If you need anything else, just let me know. Okay, thank you. Now here's another... Then can you tell me what this does, this circuit? Sure. This looks like an operational amplifier circuit with feedback resistors R1 and R2. It likely functions as a voltage amplifier or a comparator, depending on the configuration and values of the resistors. Are you looking for a specific function? Suppose R2 is 10k ohm and R1 is 10k ohm. Tell me what the output is in terms of the input. In that case, the circuit is a non-inverting amplifier. The output voltage, Vs, is given by Vs 
plus R2, R1. Since R1 and R2 are both 10 kilo ohms, the gain is 2. So the output voltage, Vs, will be Vs is 2 times Ve. So the output voltage is twice the input voltage. Now, are you sure about that? Because have a, have a closer look and see where the summing junction is um, and uh, what's going down to ground. Ah, I see what you mean. With the non-inverting input connected to ground, the circuit actually forms an inverting amplifier. The gain is still determined by fraction R2, but the output will be inverted. Vs equals minus fraction R1. Since R1, R2, the gain is minus 1. So the output, Vs, will be Vs equals minus Ve. The output yeah. voltage is the inverted version of the input voltage. Thank you. Thank you. Now, next question. What about this? This circuit, looks like, this circuit looks like another operational amplifier configuration, but I can't see all the details clearly. It appears to be an inverting amplifier. Are there specific components or connections you'd like me to confirm or explain? Uh, I think I'll just leave that one um, and move on to this one. What about this one here? This circuit appears to be a differential amplifier. It uses two input voltages, V1 and V2, and outputs a voltage that is proportional to the difference between them. The resistors determine the gain. Essentially, the output voltage is given by Vs equals minus the gain of V1 and V2. So it amplifies the difference between the two input voltages. Okay. Um, and here's another question for you. What does this do? What does this circuit do? This circuit looks like a summing amplifier. It takes multiple input voltages, V1 and V2, and produces an output voltage that is the weighted sum of these inputs, determined by the resistor values. Essentially, the output voltage, Vs, is given by Vs is minus the ratio of R1 and R2 to V2. This means the circuit sums the inputs with specific weights and inverts the result. Thank you. Now, a few more questions coming up in a minute. So here we go. Right. Sure. Just wait a second. Take your time. I'm here when you're ready. Okay. So the top circuit here, what does that one do? The top circuit is an inverting integrator. It uses a resistor R and a capacitor C in the feedback loop of an operational amplifier. The output voltage VO is proportional to the integral of the input voltage VI over time. Essentially, it performs mathematical integration, making the output the accumulated sum of the input signal. And what would the formula be for V out in terms of VN? The output voltage VO for an inverting integrator is given by VO equals negative 1 over RC into V DT. Thank this you. This means the output voltage. Okay. The bottom circuit. The bottom circuit. The bottom circuit is an inverting differentiator. It uses a capacitor C in series with the input and a resistor R in the feedback loop. The output voltage VO is proportional to the derivative of the input voltage V in with respect to time. Essentially, it produces an output that represents how fast the input is changing. And you're sure about that? Yes, I'm sure. In an inverting differentiator, the capacitor C and resistor R arrangement causes the output VO to be proportional to the rate of change of the input VIN. This makes it a differentiator circuit. So can you give me the formula, uh, write it down for me in, in the text for V out in terms of V in and in terms of the values CR1 and R2. Certainly. The output voltage VO for the differentiator is given by VO equals minus R1 C frac of DT, where R1 is the feedback resistor, C is the capacitor. The difference between the inputs is given by the math. The circuit multiplies the rate of change of the input by minus R1 C. Okay. Uh, and uh, you've written that down in the text. I can't see it at the moment. Can you tell me the Laplace transform of that, the transfer function between V out and V in? Certainly. In the Laplace 
Laplace domain, the transfer function VO over VIN for a differentiator is given by VOS equals R1C. Here, S is the complex frequency variable in the Laplace transform. This shows that the output is proportional to S, representing differentiation in the time domain. Now, are you sure about that? Because uh, a differentiator has normally got a capacitor at the input resistor, hasn't it, rather than the feedback path? You're correct. I misspoke earlier. In a differentiator, the capacitor is indeed at the input, and the resistor is in the feedback path. For the bottom circuit, if the capacitor is in the feedback loop, it actually forms an integrator. Thanks for pointing that out. So can you now tell me the transfer function of V out over V in in terms of CR1 and R2 and write it down in the text, please? Certainly. The transfer function for the bottom circuit, considering it as an integrator, is VO equals minus 1 over R1CS. This means the output VO is the integral of the input V in, scaled by minus 1 over R1C. Okay. Let us continue. What about this circuit here? Sure, I'd be happy to help. Could you show me the next circuit? That's it here. I'm just showing it to you. This circuit looks like an active low-pass filter. The capacitor C and resistor R1 form a frequency-dependent feedback network. R2 and R3 determine the gain. The circuit allows low-frequency signals to pass through while attenuating higher frequencies. Would you like a more detailed explanation of its behavior? No, that's not too bad. Uh, perhaps you could give me the transfer function between V out and V in. Sure. The transfer function for this active low-pass filter is frac of dt, where R1 and R2 are in parallel, the operational amplifier configuration provides gain, and the low-pass filtering effect is due to the capacitor C and resistor R1. And you, you've written that down in the text? Yes, I did. If you need any clarification or have more questions, just let me know. Thank you very much then. Bye-bye.